This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Robinson Crusoe, written anew for children. Chapters twenty four through twenty six. Chapter twenty seven. I work under many difficulties. My barley ripened and was ready to be harvested. I had neither scythe nor sickle to cut it down. But you will remember that I had two old swords which I had found in the ship. With one of the swords I cut off the heads of the barley and dropped them into a big basket I had made. I carried these heads into my cave and thrashed out the grain with my hands. When all my harvesting was done, I measured the grain. I had two bushels of rice and two bushels and a half of barley. This pleased me very much. I felt now that I should soon be able to raise grain enough for food. Have you ever thought how many things are necessary for the making of your bread? You have nothing to do but eat the bread after others have made it. But I had to sow, to reap, to thrash, to grind, to sift, to mix, and to bake. To do all these things I needed many tools. I had no plow to turn up the ground. I had no spade nor shovel with which to dig it. But with great labor I made me a wooden spade, which was better than nothing. After the ground was turned up, I sowed the seed by scattering it with my hands. But it must be covered so it would grow, and I had no harrow. I cut down the branch of a tree and dragged it over the field. This, I think, was the way that people in old times harrowed their ground. The third thing to be done was to build a fence around my field. After that came the reaping, the curing, the carrying home, the thrashing, the parting of the grain from the chaff, and the grinding. I needed a mill to do the grinding. I needed a sieve to sift the flour. I needed yeast and salt to mix with the dough. I needed an oven to bake it. I had to do without the most of these things, and this made my work very slow and hard. I was very lucky in having saved so many tools from the wreck, and for this I was indeed thankful. What a hard case I would have been in if I had saved nothing at all. From time to time, as I felt the need of things, I made a number of tools that served me very well. They were not such tools as you would buy at the store, but what did it matter? I have already told you about the shovel which I made from a piece of hard wood. Next to the shovel I needed a pickaxe most of all. Among the many things that I had saved from the wreck I found an old crowbar. This I heated in the fire until it was almost white hot. I then found that I could bend it quite easily. Little by little I shaped it until I had made quite a good pickaxe of it. Of course it was heavy and not at all pretty, but who would look for beauty in a pickaxe? I at first felt the need of some light baskets in which to carry my fruit and grain, so I began to study how baskets are made. It was not until I had searched almost every nook on the island that I found some long slender twigs that would bend to make wickerware. Then I spent many an hour learning how to weave these things together and shape them into the form of a basket. In the end, however, I was able to make as good baskets as were ever bought in the market. I had quite a goodly number of edge tools. Among these were three large axes and a great store of hatchets, for you will remember that we carried hatchets to trade with the savages. I had also many knives. But all these became very dull with use. I had saved a grindstone from the wreck, but I could not turn it and grind my tools at the same time. I studied hard to overcome this difficulty. At last 
I managed to fasten a string to the crank of the grindstone in such a way that I could turn it with my foot. My tools were soon sharp, and I kept them so. Chapter 25 I Become a Potter When it came to making bread, I found that I needed several vessels. In fact, I needed them in many ways. It would be hard to make wooden vessels. Of course, it was out of the question to make vessels of iron or any other metal. But why might I not make some earthen vessels? If I could find some good clay, I felt quite sure that I could make pots strong enough to be of use. After much trouble, I found the clay. The next thing was to shape it into pots or jars. You would have laughed to see the first things I tried to make. How ugly they were! Some of them fell in pieces of their own weight. Some of them fell in pieces when I tried to lift them. They were of all shapes and sizes. After I had worked two months, I had only two large jars that were fit to look at. These I used for holding my rice and barley meal. Then I tried some smaller things, and did quite well. I made some plates, a pitcher, and some little jars that would hold about a pint. All these I baked in the hot sun. They kept their shape and seemed quite hard, but of course they would not hold water or bear the heat of the fire. One day, when I was cooking my meat for dinner, I made a very hot fire. When I was done with it, I raked down the coals and poured water on it to put it out. It so happened that one of my little earthenware jars had fallen into the fire and been broken. I had not taken it out, but had left it in the hot flames. Now, as I was raking out the coals, I found some pieces of it and was surprised at the sight of them, for they were burned as hard as stones and as red as tiles. If broken pieces will burn so, said I, why cannot a whole jar be made as hard and as red as these? I had never seen potters at work. I did not know how to build a kill for firing the pots. I had never heard how earthenware is glazed. But I made my mind up to see what could be done. I put several pots in small jars in a pile, one upon another. I laid dry wood all over and about them, and then set it on fire. As fast as the wood would burn up, I heaped other pieces upon the fire. The hot flames roared all around the jars and pots. The red coals burned beneath them. I kept the fire going all day. I could see the pots become red hot through and through. The sand on the side of a little jar began to melt and run. After that, I let the fire go down little by little. I watched it all night, for I did not wish the pots and jars to cool too quickly. In the morning I found that I had three very good earthen pots. They were not at all pretty, but they were as hard as rocks and could hold water. I had two fine jars also, and one of them was well glazed with the melted sand. After this I made all the pots and jars and plates and pans that I needed. They were of all shapes and sizes. You would have laughed to see them. Of course, I was awkward at this work. I was like a little child making mud pies. But how glad I was when I found that I had a vessel that would bear the fire. I could hardly wait to put some water in it and boil me some meat. That night I had turtle soup and barley broth for supper. Chapter 26 I Build a Big Canoe While I was doing these things, I was always trying to think of some way to escape from the island. True, I was living there with much comfort. I was happier than I had ever been while sailing the seas. But I longed to see other men. I longed for home and friends. You will remember that when I was over, at the farther side of the island, I had seen land in the distance, 
fifty or such miles of water, lay between me and that land. Yet I was always wishing that I could reach it. It was a foolish wish, for there was no telling what I might find on that distant shore. Perhaps it was a far worse place than my little island. Perhaps there were savage beasts there. Perhaps wild men there would kill me and eat me. I thought of all these things, but I was willing to risk every kind of danger rather than stay where I was. At last I made up my mind to build a boat. It should be large enough to carry me and all that belonged to me. It should be strong enough to stand a long voyage over stormy seas. I had seen the great canoes which Indians sometimes make of the trunks of trees. I would make one of the same kind. In the woods I found a cedar tree which I thought was just the right thing for my canoe. It was a huge tree. Its trunk was more than five feet through at the bottom. I chopped and hewed many days before it fell to the ground. It took two weeks to cut a log of the right length from it. Then I went to work on the log. I chopped and hewed and shaped the outside into the form of a canoe. With hatchet and chisel I hollowed out the inside. For full three months I worked on that cedar log. I was both proud and glad when the canoe was finished. I had never seen so big a boat made from a single tree. It was well shaped and handsome. More than twenty men might find room to sit in it. But now the hardest question of all must be answered. How was I to get my canoe into the water? It lay not more than three hundred feet from the little river where I had first landed with my raft. But how was I to move it three hundred feet? Or even one foot? It was so heavy that I could not even roll it over. I thought of several plans, but when I came to reckon the time and the labor, I found that even by the easiest plan it would take twenty years to get the canoe into the water. What could I do but leave it in the woods where it lay? How foolish had I been! Why had I not thought of the weight of the canoe before going to the labor of making it? The wise man will always look before he leaps. I certainly had not acted wisely. I went back to my tent, sad and thoughtful. Why should I be discontented and unhappy? I was the master of all that I saw. I might call myself the king of the island. I had all the comforts of life. I had food in plenty. I might raise shiploads of grain, but there was no market for it. I had thousands of trees for timber and fuel, but no one wished to buy. I counted the money which I had brought from the ship. There were above a hundred pieces of gold and silver, but of what use were they? I would have given all for a handful of peas or beans to plant. I would have given all for a bottle of ink. End of chapters 24 through 26 Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox in spring 2006